I'm making this video half as a way of sharing my progress and half to partly fill the void that exists for those looking to get off the couch and get fit. If you skip the rest of this video and only take on board this one tip, then that's my job done here. Sign up and turn up. It's that simple. Everything else is just white noise. One of my many mottos is always sprint for a finish line. Oh, where's the finish line? There. This way, come on! Oh. Let's push, push, push. We've done it. This video is absolute evidence that this mentality will always be the right thing to do. The title and thumbnail of this video is how to run a park run in under 30 minutes. I'm gonna tell you how I went from this to this and how last Saturday I rocked up at my local park run with one target in sight. Attempt the impossible, run a park run in under 30 minutes. This video is about that sub 30 minute attempt. In the summer of last year, my eldest teenage daughter got herself a new Saturday job and I had to drop her off. Drop off time coincided with park run start time. And I'd regularly see these large groups of people running what looked like an official race. I asked some questions of the officials and that's how I first discovered park run. I signed up that Saturday afternoon and in August last year, I ran my first ever park run. This is my first park run. And the reason why I'm doing the park run here in Malden is because my daughter, give me a wave, man. <laughs> Apparently I'm embarrassing. It's because she's got herself a summer job. I've done quite well today, but I feel like I did better than last week. And I thought I did well last week. But this time I registered, so I should have a finishing position. The first one I ran, I didn't register at the end because I was too embarrassed to acknowledge it. It was very slow, but I soon realized this was nonsense and went back the following Saturday, ran a 33.49, which I knew was slow. Thank you. Well done. I've got my results for the park run. So this is my first ever park run results. As I say, I ran it last week, but forgot to register. So I wanted to get some results. Uh, and it was 33 minutes. I ran it in. So out of 225 official finishers, I was 168th. <laughs> then for some strange reason, the subsequent five other park runs I run that summer got even slower. I realized that just running park runs as a way of getting faster at park runs wasn't the best way to do it. So I stopped going, focused on losing weight, focused on strength training, and especially focused on my endurance or VO2 max. It was bumming me out to regularly push as hard as I could at a park run and not be getting any faster. I knew I had to run slower for longer to build up my aerobic ability and I used Zwift as a way of significantly improving my max heart rate capacity by regularly racing in zone three and four. My plan was to do this intermixed with some strength training exercises in the gym, using some Sally McRae training bits and pieces to then return to a park run and smash out a new PB that would eventually get me below 30 minutes. I intend to run my 5K in under 30 minutes challenge, basically. Uh, it means that I wanna run a 5K park run in under half an hour. Shaving an extra minute and seven seconds per mile or 40 seconds per K is not as easy as it sounds. For a six foot two large bloke like me, it's currently nearly impossible. I've tried several times now, which is why the, this is the perfect challenge for me for the next few months. So in my effort to achieve this, I'll be hitting that gym to lose fat and gain strength in the right places. I need to lose weight as running this heavy makes it ridiculously hard. When I made this plan, I set it as my new year's resolution back in January of this year. I made a video announcing it to the world or all three of my then subscribers and I went for it. 
I just want to add in here that I've literally just crossed a 2,000 subscriber mark. Unbelievable. And I appreciate every single subscriber's support. So thank you very much for if, if you are a subscriber. If you're not yet subscribed, please do so if you see value in this video. For the record, 30 minutes is not that fast. The average finish time for completing a park run is 32.30. And the 30 minute mark is a mental barrier that I and countless others see as a time just out of reach. It's a time that you need to run at a fairly fast, consistent pace to reach and a time many can't do from couch to 5K. If you're heavy like me, then you have to expend so much energy that it feels so far out of reach that I may as well have set myself a target to walk on the moon. It felt impossible at the time. I then started watching loads of YouTube videos about getting faster at park runs and the overwhelming majority of these videos are aimed at relatively capable runners looking to get even faster than the fast pace that they've already set. Very few were aimed at newbie runners or people wanting to use running and park runs as a way of getting fit and losing some weight whilst also having a decent target to aim for. The first thing I did was I signed up to a park run. I registered my name online, it's all free, and I turned up on a Saturday morning at 9am and I just ran. Once you've done this and you maybe want to get better at park runs, then the next thing you need to focus on are the things that you're really good at. You also need to work out what you're bad at, you're okay at, and what you're good at, but you really need to focus on what you're really, really good at. The really, really good at list won't be a long list. If it is, then maybe add modest, humble, and realistic to the bad at list. Disregard the bad, okay, and good stuff. Focus entirely on the really, really good at list. For me, I was hugely overweight, unfit, really heavy, and I had zero endurance and power. I was also awful at taking advice and following instructions. I still am, to be fair. And I was really, really good at hitting financial targets because of my past life in a corporate sales driven environment. I'm really good at motivating myself and I never quit on something I can see value in. So I decided to completely ignore the fact that I was an obese 39 year old back in 2019 and I tried cycling initially. Very quickly I realized this was going to kill me and the saddle would split me in half if I kept doing it. So I then thought running can't be as hard as cycling. So I hit the streets. I couldn't run more than a few feet without feeling like my heart was going to explode. It was exponentially harder than cycling. And I was very self-conscious that I was out in public attempting to run weighing nearly 30 stone or 190 kg. And this is where I nearly quit, but I saw enormous value in what I was trying to achieve. So I stuck with it. I had a moment of realization that this wasn't gonna be a walk in the park. And I was at the start of a very, very long journey. I initially wanted there to be shortcuts, but I very quickly realized there wasn't gonna be. I decided to take a step back, not run before I could walk, literally, focus on my targets, which were to lose weight and get fit. And I decided to walk until I could eventually run. So I went for a walk in my local park, around and around. It turns out this exercise malarkey is literally a walk in the park. I kept walking my local park until I could walk more than a mile. This took months until I could walk more than three miles without paying for it over two days of recovery. Cutting a very, very long story short, this process from walking to running took me nearly two years and it culminated in me running the London Marathon. You see, the thing is, this isn't the start line. The start line was in my village almost exactly one year ago to the day. It is the 1st of October. I'm going to try a new challenge. I'm going to do what uh, I've named the 30-30 challenge. But this is the start of it. Day one, 1st of October, 30-30 challenge, 30 miles for 30 days. Here we go. Yesterday was one attempt of many to run 10 miles. I did nine miles non-stop and I was very happy with myself. That spring is nearly here. That's 10 miles. That's the furthest I've ever run non-stop. I'm still going. Day three of running 10 miles every day.
Okay, it's the 27th of September today. Um, I've just come out and completed my last run. I've been running for a year, pretty much every day. This weekend, Sunday, the 3rd of October, 2021, I run the London Marathon. The video for this is in the description if you fancy watching that. Running the London Marathon was one of my greatest ever achievements, but it made me realize that I was not fast. I wasn't even faster than the slower runners, but I had an engine and I can keep going longer than most people, partly down to my stubborn self-determination, but I was not fast and I wanted to be faster. This is where Park Run came in. When I discovered Park Run back in the summer of last year, I loved the idea of training every week to get faster at a 5k distance. I set my new sub 30 minute target back in January of this year, almost a whole year ago now as I make this video, a 5k in under 30 minutes challenge. It took me five months from the summer of last year to January of this year to realize that I was very much in the 33 to 35 minute bracket at Park Runs and shaving three to five minutes off my time would be no small feat. There are a lot of YouTube videos that offer really good advice on how to run a better or faster park run. I would caveat that park runs are not just for runners who want to run the fastest. They're also for runners like me who just want to be at their best. The only person you are racing in a park run is yourself. That is absolutely true. And if you're completely new to running or you're trying to go from walking to running like I did, or you're simply trying to get around the 5k route without stopping to walk, then again, it doesn't matter what park run you rock up at on a Saturday morning at 9am, as you'll be doing something that the majority of the population won't be doing, and that's getting up and getting out there exercising. You're being the better version of you. This leads me on to my next point, which is to run slow to run fast. This is one of the most commonly known tips in the running world, and one I have heard a million times. Run slow in training to run faster in races. This is a tip I did not listen to, and too often I pushed myself to the brink of exhaustion until I realized, through the fact that I was a really heavy bloke, that I had no choice but to run slow. I lost a lot of weight, got fitter, built up power in my legs that previously was non-existent, and most importantly, I became very good at endurance. I have an engine, like an old steam train that isn't fast, but I can go on for hours and hours. Running long distances slow like this indirectly helped my shorter race endurance. This was not my intention. It is now a welcomed byproduct of some of the long distance training I've completed over the past few years. This year especially, I ran the 100K Thames Path Challenge, and the training for this has massively helped my park run PB training. Also, I will add losing a shed load of weight and now weighing in the 15 stone region has made a huge difference as well. I only stopped from the end of last year because my circumstances changed and I no longer had Saturday mornings free, but I kept up the training knowing I'd return eventually. Running any distance is 10% physicality and 90% mentality. The physical only comes into play when the race official shouts go on the start line. <laughs> The mental aspect comes when you set that alarm on Friday night and you force yourself up and out of your bed on Saturday morning. When you're running around that course, your body will be screaming at you to stop and walk. The man or woman who will come in first at your local park run will have the same urge to quit. They've just trained enough to be able to sustain a faster pace than you up to the point of wanting to quit. That's the only difference. The person at the front winning the race in the blistering time is pushing through barriers just as much as the person at the back trying to run their first park run without stopping to walk. This is the beauty of park runs for me. Everyone is there to achieve the same thing, to be a better version of themselves. Now I've run a few park runs. I know that they're not scary. No one is looking at me. No one cares if I can't run and no one cares how long it takes me to complete the course. Now that I know that, the next thing to focus on is pacing. A lot of new runners, myself included, thought that pushing hard at the start was the way to go. But if you do this, then you will 100% gas yourself out and there is zero time for recovery in such a short course. 5K is not far enough to make time back if you lose it. Pacing myself is key. Initially, I couldn't run a sub 30 minute 5K pace without having to slow, so I ran slower for longer, measured my heart rate, tried to keep it in zone one whilst running. This is easier said than done, but practice helped build my endurance and muscle memory. I kept doing this until I could run 5K at a pace that would get me under 30 minutes on a treadmill. 
I practiced on the treadmill often and eventually I broke the back of it on the treadmill. Too often I turn up at park runs and other runs, including full marathons, and I get caught up in all the hype. It's a great atmosphere at these events, but I always end up getting hyped up myself. I must not, must not try and keep up with them. It is not a 5k park run ride. You will not finish in under five hours. If you try running a four minute kilometer. Then I run the first kilometer at a blistering pace, far too fast for comfort. And this always ruins my pacing strategy. Now, if I do this in a marathon, I can always slow down and pick the pace back up when I need to, when I've regained some of my energy. But in a 5K, you just don't have the time to do that. So last Saturday, I specifically had a time and pacing number I had to try and stick to. I decided to go for 27 minutes. That will be evident in a minute when I explain why. And I had to run a 524 kilometer pace. I treated this park run PB attempt the same as I do when I go into a 10K, half or even marathon attempt. I also learned recently that starting a 5K PB attempt cold and straight out the car is not optimal. On my really long training runs, I've taught myself to completely ignore my body and mind for the first three miles. I never enjoy running for the first three miles and I find that my best running comes both from a pace and enthusiasm perspective. It happens around the five to 10 mile mark. My point here is I need a good warm up to ensure my muscles, heart rate and enthusiasm levels are peaked. Just turning up in the car cold to do those weird basic leg stretches that all runners do on the start line that had zero value will not cut it for me. So last Saturday, I left the car at home and ran to my nearest park run, which was roughly 8k away. Okay. <clears throat> I will just quickly add that I had a cold this morning. I still have remnants of it now when my voice is a bit croaky and I was losing my voice. Luckily, this is a running challenge and doesn't need a lot of talking. It's 8 a.m. Saturday morning. I'm on my way to a park run. I've just left the house. It is a bitterly cold, four degrees at the moment. So I've got to run like seven, eight K to get to the park run. But yeah, I'm gonna start running now because I'm really cold. <sighs> I timed it so I arrived 10 minutes before the start and this ensured that I was fired up and ready to go. My heart rate was going and my blood was pumping. And while everyone else was standing there shivering, as it's the end of November now, I was stood there, sweat pouring off me, steam rising in the winter sun, eyes fixed on the prize. I must have looked like an absolute lunatic. In my head, I felt like Eric Liddell in the famous scene from Chariots of Fire. The starter gun went, or the race official shouts three, two, one, go on a megaphone, and we went. I shot off the start line, mindful not to overdo it. I knew that if I went too slow, I wouldn't be able to pick it back up. I'm dying. This is a fast pace. Before the race, I'd set myself a pre-park run target of 27 minutes. And to achieve this very ambitious target, I would have to run a 5.24 kilometer pace. Sometimes if you aim for the stars, you might hit the moon. This was a pace that I'd practiced in the gym on the treadmill during my recent interval training. I started off running 200 meter intervals at a 5.24 pace and gradually built it up to running the full 5K at this pace on the treadmill. So in theory, I could do this at the park run, but theories don't always work out like that as reality throws in hills and puddles and dogs on leads, which the treadmill simply doesn't have.
So where does the power come from to see the race to its end? From within. I believe God made me for a purpose. He also made me fast. I also got to experience one of the best feelings that as a big and heavy runner, I didn't get to experience very often. And that is to overtake runners that left the start line a lot faster than me, but slowed because they got their pacing wrong. The golden rule of any race, if you see a finish line, you must sprint for it, no matter how tired you are. Plus, I had absolutely no idea of the time, and in a second, you will see why sprinting for a finish line is so important. Ah. 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 And then as I finished, I kneeled headfirst into the mud until my heart rate came back down to earth and I could again speak. Does it work? Uh, well done. Yeah. Yep. Now that I've actually got my breath back and I'm able <laughs> to stand up. So, sit rep. I feel fantastic. I'm gonna start with that. Doing these park runs gives me and probably everyone else that does them, a big boost and a big buzz and a real hype in energy. I'm gonna start with that. I had a eight or nine K run up here and by the time I got running, I was nice and warm. Anyway, really good day, lovely sunshine, crisp autumn morning. Uh, I'm starting to sound like my dad now. I'm gonna move on to the time. 30 minutes and three seconds my watch got me out on the finish line. However, 30 minutes and three seconds may not be my time. My watch actually said that I'd completed it in exactly 30 minutes and three seconds. But I later realized that I'd pressed stop on my watch only a few seconds over the finish line. I'd wasted a few seconds crossing it to get my head together. I needed to see my official result email that I had to wait an hour or so for. I had to run the 8K back home. I had a shower by the time it came through and I was genuinely scared to open it. I felt like a teenager, again, getting his GCSE results. It meant that much to me. Because of my aim for the stars mentality, I achieved an official park run result of, are you ready for this? 29 minutes and 59 seconds. You couldn't get any closer. I ran a sub 30 minute park run for the first time in my life. I now wish I filmed myself when I opened that email. I was so happy. I beat my target by one second. If anyone ever says to you, don't bother sprinting for a finish line, never listen to them. If I hadn't sprinted as hard as I did for that finish line, I wouldn't have achieved my 2023 New Year's target of a sub 30 minute park run. Always sprint for a finish line. I had absolutely no idea at the time when I was 400 meters away. Imagine not bothering to run that hard. Everything I did last Saturday was perfect. The 8K warm up run there was perfect and exactly what I needed. My attitude on the day was on point. I wanted it so badly. I had a decent breakfast and I was well hydrated with a good night's sleep the night before. And my pacing, my pacing was perfect. Any faster than that and I wouldn't have had the energy for the sprint at the end. I ran the whole way, partly in zone four, but mainly in zone five, at points completely maxing out my heart rate. I averaged 92% of my maximum endurance ability across the whole race. Tactically, this was a perfect result for me, and I would have been devastated to have executed it this well and failed. Ask any racer, any real racer. It doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. Winning's winning. But most importantly, most importantly, I ran a sub 30 minute 5K for the first time in my life. Unbelievable. It still makes me happy saying this now. Ah, 